Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Reflections on the Rock here at Covenant. We're delighted you've joined us again, whether it's Wednesday evening or at some other time during the week that you listen to this, because we have discovered that people just um, watch it all watch kinds it of times. all different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you never know. Um, we're very glad uh, as we prepare ourselves to move forward into um, Palm Sunday. We're going to be looking today at the psalm that we always hear on uh, Palm Sunday. Um, but I'm only <laughs> I only get two <laughs> verses of it. Anne gets to reflect on There's the so rest of it. There's so much to say about, you know, <laughs> God's steadfast love endures forever. <laughs> so, uh, because God's steadfast love endures forever, um, uh, we're going to start with that wonderful, um, affirming, God-praising hymn, Great is thy faithfulness. Let us pray. Oh God, you are so faithful. Mm -hmm. And every morning and every evening we de do see new things from you. And all I have needed and we have needed, you have provided. Yes. And so we praise you and thank you for uh, the gift of another time to be together, to learn from one another, mm -hmm. to listen to your voice. Um, and so we pray for open hearts and open ears. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is a brief um, <laughs> but spectacular, but spectacular <laughs> uh, reading from Psalm 118, the first two voice, verses. And it's very familiar. Lots of songs have been <laughs> written about this. Um, but also, it's traditionally always the psalm for Palm Sunday. Psalm 18, verses 1 to 2. Oh, give thanks to God who is so good, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Go home. It's yeah. time. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, when she started out by saying, oh, there's so much to say about God's steadfast love, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah? It's like, I get two verses. <laughs> but actually, you're right. Um, there just is, um, there's, there really is so much in two little verses. First of all, um, it's, it's thanksgiving. Yeah, Give thanks exactly. to God. Yep. And there just is not enough gratitude in right. the world right. um, today. Um, and, and certainly not enough gratitude toward God. Yeah. Um, because most people in the culture we live in, anyway, um, think that everything they have, they worked hard for. Mm. They pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. Right. They had, right. you know, the great Protestant work ethic. They had the, the great American way of, mm -hmm. um, you know, making your own way and doing it yourself. Um, and so to give thanks, number one, um, is a practice we could, a spiritual practice we could learn um, to do daily. Yes. And then to give thanks to God adds another whole dimension um, that I could say thank you, uh, you know, in the morning. I don't really have any trouble waking up and saying, good morning, God, writing it in my journal even. I, every morning I get up and I look out the window and 
and I see the sunrise and I know it's moving and I'm moving. So mm -hmm. I say, okay, thanks God for another day. Would it be so hard to turn to my husband and say, thanks for being here? Or, Aww. you know, yeah. thanks for making this lovely home possible. Thanks right. for whatever, right. you know? Right. It would shock, shock him <laughs> considerably. Well. But, but I'm always the one who's going to be telling you about different spiritual practices. So here's one in the first one, two, three, four, five words of a psalm. Two new practices. One, be grateful. Yes. And two, be grateful to God. Mm -hmm. What do you have to thank God for? It, it, it goes on to say, um, who is so good? So uh, God, ste uh, whose steadfast love endures forever. We are thanking God for, well, we could list a number of things, beginning with the sunrise, beginning with companionship and good friends and mm -hmm. wonderful music and skills, all manner of things we could be thankful for. But what does the psalmist thankful for? God's love. character. Yeah. God's character is good. Mm -hmm. And then God's steadfast love endures forever. This person is, is grateful for that. It's hesed. It's, it's, um, it's steadfast love. It's um, other translations are loving kindness. Um, do you really believe that? Oh. Do you? I are mean, you alive or are you dead? <laughs> yeah. Well, do you believe that God is good? Yeah. You know, we have this trite little thing that we say in churches, God is good all, all the, the time. time. And all the time, God, God is, is good. good. We do this. But do we really believe it? Mm -hmm. If God is good... Um, what are the implications yeah. of that? I, I really believe, and I've discovered in my own life, that everything about my life um, is affected by my image of God. Wow. If I believe um, that God is an old white man with a big stick, and Moses is coming down the mountain to get me, right. uh, that's how I'll treat people. Right. If I believe that God is good, I may not be able to believe at the same time then that God will intervene and, you know, create some magical answer for my requests. But I can believe that all the time it is God's character to yeah. be good. And I think that's a question. Another spiritual practice is to say, who is God? Mm -hmm. Who do I believe God is? Mm -hmm. I can describe um, Anne's character for you. I might be right, I might be wrong. <laughs> um, but what Anne's character is doesn't affect every day in my life. Ah. Well, it does some, almost every day, but, <laughs> but God's does. Yes, yeah. You know, my image of God um, impacts all of my life and my attitude. Um, and and then this other little word that's in there, this God's steadfast love, this God's loving kindness, God's bent towards mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. um, endures mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. And endures is not a wimpy word. No, no. Endures suggests that God has had a lot of practice and patience at wow. making this character of love real for me and, we and often for everybody. Go right over it. And we say, oh, God is love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, so what? So what, God is love? But endures what does it mean? everything. But endures. Yeah. So that then we, um, all the time, God is good. Do we, do we really believe it? Okay. And, um, and, and all the rest of my life, um, is affected by that. When I, when I stopped, well, no, that's not right, when I stopped. When I expanded my vision of God, if I had to draw God, ah. when it changed, when it, when it stopped being Moses on the mountain, right. um, um, all sorts of other things fell into place. Yes. 
and some other things had to be let go. Um, and it's very, and, and you'll see this all the time, well, we resist change. So I will understand if you don't ever want to question God the Father oh, as your image. Right. That's, I understand that, but, but let me tell you how freeing it is yeah. to let it go. Yeah. It, it is something else. The other thing about this two little verses is that it's a repetition. It's not just that we are being called to give thanks to God who is so good, whose steadfast love endures forever. But then there's this invitation to everybody else. Yeah. Let, Let Israel, Israel say, say, God's steadfast love endures forever. It's a communal yeah. psalm. This is yeah. a psalm of worship. This is a psalm of invitation. We're inviting one another in to, um, to praise together. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great start to, um, to be together on, on the beginning of oh. Holy Week, to, to gather um, together to praise and to um, celebrate this God whose steadfast love endures forever. And then, as you will discover, when Anne starts to talk about the rest of the psalm that I didn't get, <laughs> is that the same phrase ends the psalm. Yes. Yeah. So I think about this bracket, this bracketing of the psalm mm -hmm. with praise for God who is love. Yeah. And then I start to think then about my own practices of, of bracketing um, my day, first of all, mm -hmm. with, the, with the idea of God as love or the idea of gratitude. To begin the day with gratitude, yeah, thanks for another night, but then to end the day with gratitude right. Absolutely. Um, is also a wonderful spiritual practice. And then to begin and end, to bracket difficult things I have to do mm. with this phrase. So I have to, um, I, I have to face some difficulty, say, in a relationship. And before I go to have that conversation mm -hmm. with that person, mm -hmm. okay, God's steadfast love yeah. endures forever. Yeah. God is good all, all the, the time, time, even in this moment, mm -hmm. in this difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. And if I believe that God is good and not God is not judging me, right. then I can feel held right. in that difficult conversation. Right. I'm going to um, remember that. That's you know, good. just just to the beginning, you know, okay, thank you, God, for this time. Thank you. Help me get through it because I know your love mm -hmm. is, and, and, and if I can focus on God's love in the moment before I have that confrontation, mm -hmm. I know that there's a better chance that God's love will come, come out through, through you. me. Um, yes. And, you know, it's a, it's a, this is a liturgical psalm, and I'm sure you've got other things to say about it, um, um, because there's it goes on for the reasons that it was sung um, is sung by us at Palm Sunday because it works on you know opening the gates and yep. joy and the hope of the faith and it's always looking forward in anticipation. Mm -hmm. It's this is not a psalm that looks back and says, oh, woe is me. Right. This is not a psalm that looks back and says, well, thank you, God, but, you know, we're on our own now. No, this is a, 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 a psalm that looks forward. Yeah. We are looking to the future. Um, and, and we have to begin to believe that God will be good in the future mm -hmm. um, because it's all the time and it's forever. Yeah, forever. Um, and as we move into Holy Week, it gets, we, we love Palm Sunday. I know. And many of us then jump right from Palm Sunday to Easter mm -hmm. um, because we like joy. It's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. We love a parade, um, but you can't get to Easter joy right. without going through Holy Week. Yeah. And so let this psalm be your um, sustenance mm -hmm. during the difficult days Absolutely. of Holy Week so that we can actually walk together with one another and with Jesus through, um, through Holy Week. Um, and I think that this might be the very thing 
These two little verses might be the very thing that will sustain you as maybe it sustained Jesus. Hmm. Yes. I split the psalm up just because that's how, you know, we, yeah. we skip a few verses. Right. But yeah. it, it, you know, it's, it, it is a joyous, um, and we'll talk about that, a little bit more about that on, on um, Friday, but just this idea about you start the week of Holy Week off in the gratitude. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a difficult conversation or a difficult journey to the cross, cross. that sustenance mm -hmm. is there to just mm -hmm. feed and sustain. Yeah, yeah. Even if we only practice it this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the Holy Week, just start and bracket the day with God is so good I know. all the oh time. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Well, and speaking of our, our good God... Um, this is a, a psalm, of course, um, hopefully one that Jesus would have sang and certainly known quite well. But the reason that um, we know, part of the reason that we know that God is so good is because Jesus tells us so. Mm. And um, we hear the stories of Jesus. So mm. the background um, music to this prayer is Tell Me the Stories of Jesus oh, yeah. I Love. Hear. Yeah. And our um, our prayer requests are embedded in the in the prayer. Mm. So let us pray. Gracious God, who is so good and whose steadfast love endures forever. We know of your great love through the stories of Jesus, and we are grateful. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us on our faith journey so that we come to trust in your steadfast love and your goodness. And so leaning into that sense of trust, mm -hmm. we lift to you the prayers for the United Methodist Church on a journey to live into a new understanding of unity, mission, and ministry. We pray for those recovering from illness and surgery or addiction. We pray for those who mourn and grieve deeply at the loss of a loved one. And we celebrate that Ramona's daughter, Eileen, is home from the hospital. And we pray for the congregation and friends of Covenant and those who come to us for food and fellowship. Pray for those struggling with the end of emergency SNAP benefits mm. and the hardship that it has caused so many families. Mm -hmm. As we prepare to set out on the Holy Week journey, remind us through your steadfast love that when we follow Jesus into the streets of Jerusalem, we wave our palms and sing our alleluias in honor of God's steadfast love. We join our voices to pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
So Friday, we will continue on with this psalm, but it'll be verses 19 to 29, and there will be a a lot of similar reflections, but again, it's to get us into that frame of mind uh, for Palm Sunday and our entry into Holy Week. And so on Holy Week, uh, we have our uh, Monday, Thursday service here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock with communion. We'll be live streaming that as well. And again on Friday for our Good Friday service. And um, that will be also be at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary and we'll stream it online and post it later. We'll also um, have regular reflection on the rock on Wednesday. Yes. um, Yes. Before that. Yeah. We're going to look forward to the Monday, Thursday time period. And then our altar for Easter has traditionally always been, you know, bathed in spring flowers. And um, that's another thing that I think during after mm. COVID that we did really didn't pick up doing the same way. But if you have a flower that you would like to bring, I know my mom and I have a bouquet in mind that we'll be bringing on Easter morning, or you could bring it on Thursday or Friday. And then we will um, decorate the altar that morning on Easter morning. Mm. So remember to bring your flowers. Great. Yeah. That's another communal participatory yes. thing yes. that we're doing this together. Yeah. It talks in this r- later on in the psalm on Friday, the horns of the altar. Oh, right. And right. Um, so we're going to decorate the horns of the altar. The um, Our closing music, who knew, but we're not surprised that there is actually a little song called God is Good All the Time. Oh. Which I didn't know because it's in um, the next supplement to the next supplement. Okay. So, um, but it has delightful words um, that all circumstances, in all circumstances, in all situations, in the um, the verse, the first verse is in our doubts, hopes, and fears, in our joys and tears, God is good. So that we know that God is good all the time, and we can trust that. So may you go into your evening trusting in the deep, deep love of God Mm -hmm. who is so good. God is good all the time. Hmm. Good night. Good night.